I'm Calgary born, but I'm Toronto raised. Okay. You know what I mean? So, um, as a baby, I was brought over here, like one or two years old, and most of my life's been in Toronto. Okay. Living up in um, Caledon East, and um, there's a lot of, it's mostly farmland. Yeah. So, yeah, I grew up with cows, horses, you know, my mom was into horses, owning them, goats, my dad, um, my dad and my mom were together at the time, and um, there were a lot of dogs on the farm and all of that. A lot of animals. Yeah, so at around grade five or grade six, I went straight from farm into like city. the projects. Oh, okay. <laughs> Never mind the city. <laughs> yeah, so I'm here in like the projects type of thing, you know, because my dad owned a home there. So I went from my mom's um, when they separated um, during that time when I was younger. Mm -hmm. um, I ended up going into that area. So in North York. And uh, I grew up there from grade six to about 13 years of my life. And then I started branching out, moving around in different places in Toronto, in, in and out of Toronto. Yeah. Well, I, my, my mom, she's, she's an inventor, right? So. Hold on. Yeah. Inventor? Yeah, inventor. So, like, there's a story that she tells me about how she invented the Cabbage Patch Kids and she took it to, like, these people who are a big corporation who are um, trying to like, you know, they invest in people like that, who are small entrepreneurs with ideas. And then, yeah, exactly, that type of thing. And they took her idea because she didn't have the right um, backings, you know, in terms of like, make sure everything was patent properly before she opened her mouth. And that turned into like, um, the, um, the Care Bears. Yeah, the, and the Cabbage Pack. So I don't know if this is all true. This is all here to say my mom's words in my ears. So, hey, I can only believe what comes out of her mouth, but she is a beautiful, she's an artist and she's so creative, so I would not deny it. Okay. You know what I mean? No, she's I very creative, like I get a lot of inspiration from her. Okay. Yeah, it's so, like even this Joker piece behind me is family inspired, you know? Okay, wow. Yeah. We'll, we'll get into the pieces because you have amazing stuff in here. Right, right. So we'll, get, we'll get some back, the inside scoop. Y yeah, but yeah, she, she, she's, she's a really creative person. She's, and my dad, he can draw also. Um, I was in grade seven, sitting on um, the dining room table, and I'm like, Dad, look what I drew, because I was already, already an artist, mm -hmm. right? Um, he's like, yeah, you think you're good? Watch this. He drew like, a man riding a bike. Yeah. And I was like, and he did it in five minutes. And, it, <laughs> and I remember the exact picture, like it was so vivid. That's how much it stuck in my head. So yeah, I do have it in my blood. Yeah, on both yeah. sides, which is weird. Yeah, both sides. Because right out of high school, I was drawing, like, I was doing paintings with acrylics. I wasn't working with oils yet. And um, I was doing contests for Black History Month. I came second prize. I won $500. And out of that, right out of that, like, when I graduated high school, I went into, see, I went right into airbrushing. And then tattoos. But throughout the whole time, I was doing paintings. You know what I mean? So I always had this idea or dream to kind of like eventually be famous as an artist in painting. Somewhat, somewhat, you know what I mean? But I never thought that I'd end up um, pursuing a full-time career in tattoos, mm -hmm. you know? So the tattoos is when all the um, income started rolling and I was able to use that money to invest into, into um, paints paint supplies, canvases, building my own canvases from scratch because I wanted to go bigger, you know, and broaden my horizon with um, my, my, my art, you know, and what I was learning and all of that. I just, I just see people doing bigger things and I like to like, I always do what, what I see. You know, I'm a visual learner. I don't read through, I don't learn through like reading. I read, I learn through watching vis videos and so forth, you know, so yeah. That's amazing. Um, so, how, sorry, how long have you been doing the tattoo? 12 years. So, both, like 12 to 13 years now. Okay. Yeah. And um, I've been taking, I've been doing painting my whole life for 20 years, mm -hmm. but only taking it seriously to really say, okay, I'm going to push now. Because I'm like tired of like, like doing all these arm masterpieces on people. And they walk out the door, I'll put 15 hours on one person, and it's gone. 
you know? <laughs> I never see it again. So I'm like, why didn't I put 15 hours on a canvas? And sell it. And I could keep it, or I could sell it, or I could duplicate it and let many enjoy that one piece, yeah. you know? So that was my mindset in taking, um, taking being an artist, an actual like mixed media artist to the next level, like seriously. And that started two years ago. Okay. And so that's like 2020. Wow. You know? Okay. Well, that's, yeah. That, that's a lot of work in two years. Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> I know. Tell me about it. In the last two years as well, we've had a pandemic. So, how has the how do you how did you manage through the pandemic? Like, kind of just really taking it seriously at that time. Um, yeah, I was, and I um, I had a lot of pieces that I was working on from my other shop um, that I had done tattoos out of. It was a smaller shop, like you know, it's four or five hundred square feet, and then I I had done like seven or eight pieces for that year. And then, you know, similar to this, a little smaller, but 40, 50, 60 hours inputted into each painting. Yeah, like, you know what I mean? That's, that's what I mean by detail, like good paintings, you know, quali quality paintings. And then um, from there, I went and, and the pandemic hit and I couldn't work anymore. So I really went in hard with, paint, with painting now because, you know, now I'm getting this, like all these little extra money from the COVID they was coming to me, so I could able, I was able to like manage all the bills and so forth, and then I was able to just focus on my paintings, mm -hmm. and then uh, at the same time I had sold two paintings, and I was it was a first real sale, um, that I had gotten. Yeah. I'm not gonna talk about the numbers, but they're they're definitely with zero zeros and zeros. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so um, I, I was that's kind of like the one of the best, the happiest moments. Yeah. The inspiring moments that 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 um that that really yeah that happened during covid that really pushed me into like getting a bigger place so i used the money and invested in to this um this studio that i have now mm -hmm. so where a lot of people were like suffering and complaining and um just dealing with wearing masks and going to school online and all of the you know things and the, there was so many bad things happening like, you know, on media was all that negative and stuff. I wouldn't pay attention to any of it. I was just focused more on, um, I would look into it. I don't want to be dumb and like not know what's going on around me. But at the same time, my main focus was to like complete my mission and get, get to a better place, just to get to a better level, you know what I mean? Than I was at, so. I love that. 